So here is John and Wick a few days into training, settling down very well indeed. They are 100% parent reared male Harry Salks. They are brothers um, from the same clutch. Um, upon picking them up, we put equipment on them. Uh, we cast them up and put all the anklets and jessies and all the equipment that we need to start the training process. We have got a video on how to do this as well. If you would like to know, uh, have a look on the YouTube channel. So this now is the manning stage, which is one of my favourite parts of training. Just getting the bird used to absolutely everything and spending as much time with the bird as you can. Me, I like to spend at least sort of two, three hours minimum a day with my birds of prey, trying to get them used to dogs, ferrets, buildings, people, touching, everything like that. Everything that you think might scare the bird or um, cause a problem further on down the line in training. Get them used to it. Here, I like to bring them in, just chill out, watching the TV, chill out, and then take them for walks to the hunting ground, get them used to trees, roads, you know, pest control sites, if you're a pest control falconer, farmyard equipment, anything like that. Don't rush your birds. Take them... Um, at their own pace some birds might take a week two weeks before they'll even let you touch them don't worry about this just relax back into it and then try and get them up on the glove don't scare your birds or anything like that go at their uh, pace that's very important and just sit back and enjoy it i was quite lucky with john and wick here they took them about five six days before they started settling down into the routine of things um getting used to them basically doing everything they were practically lived on my fist for the first few days and that really sort of broke the back of their taming process. Okay guys we're a few days into training now, about a week nearly, um, the manning down okay. Uh, basically what I'm going to try and do is I'm trying to get them used to feeding and sharing food off the glove. Um, I don't want to be able to recall and fly them completely by myself so <laughs> They've not been doing too bad, they've not really been squabbling with each other or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to bring in a whole rabbit leg and get them to share. So I'm going to hold it in my glove, um, so they're not snatching, okay? And then we can just share that. Wick on my right hand side, he's a little bit more of the dominant one at the moment. relax and eat all of that and see how this goes. Like I say, normally if uh, one jumps up to the glove, the other comes. Uh, it's not, not been too bad really. I've never actually grabbed my bare hand or anything like that, but I mean obviously I'm wearing a little glove here just to be on the safe side till we get used to it. I mean, I don't know if this is going to be the way I end up flying and we'll see. Like I say, Wick is the more dominant one at the, at the moment. So John normally does keep himself to himself. But as training progresses like this, they should just follow on to the glove without any food, really. Even though Wick here, he has got, he has got my hand, he's not, he's not gripping, he's not binding to it. Get my bare hands in there as well. You can just relax down onto it. Like I said, they are brothers, they have been together since birth. Let's see how this goes. It's just their early morning feed right now. Sad introducing the female as well, she's, she's taken to them very well.
I've been doing, I want to do a lot of sharing work with them, just so there's no sort of squabbling, you know, every meal they have, they used to, used to eat in with me, and get, them, get my hands involved, and anything like that. So I'll just put my camera down for a second just to uh, take off my glove. Now I want to get my bare hands in there as well. Like I say, they can have a nice big chuck of, pluck of that and I might give them a full chick as well. A nice little Dio chick. So I find most of the time with Harris Hawks, they do a lot of sharing, sharing work. They tend to normally not snatch too badly. So like, as you can see here he's got his finger around my tap tan around my uh, thumb but he's not gripping. You need trouble you are John. Hey man son. And what I'll do is, as soon as I've got every last bit off there, I'm just going to remove it and then they can finish off this last little bit of chick. And feel the crops, feel the keel. Like I say, we've been doing this for a few days now, just getting them really used to, really used to the food and me being there. And I think they're doing all right, aren't you? Eh? Not a bad bit of training. There we go. So after a couple of weeks of training and manning the birds, getting them used to me and feeding off the glove, we introduced him to one meal a day just to start getting them used to being fed at the same time. And here what we're doing is feeding them and trying to get them actually to jump to the glove and start the actual flying training. So all we're doing is just getting them used to being weighed and still feeding and sharing off the glove with my hand being in there. This is very important as you don't want to get grabbed later on. I find with the Harris Hawks as well, because they are a social animal, if one of the boys is doing well and coming um, to the glove better, then the other one likes to be with them as well. This glove training is super important in these early stages because this is their purchase safety and they should always feel happy and safe when on the glove. They don't fear me, they don't fear each other and they're always willing to come back.
even when being trained on the glove, we still always drag rabbits and carcasses for the birds to understand that being fed off the glove is not the only food source in the world. So here what we're doing is, without any weight dropping, just a bit of enrichment, getting them used to seeing a rabbit move, getting used to going up and grabbing it, and just letting the birds have a little bit of fun and learning as they develop. As you can see here, Wick has no idea that the rabbit actually is food. So even though they are hunting birds, and they will be hunting birds, even from a very early age, we have to teach them everything they need to know. So right now, we're just getting used to me being there as well, teaching the birds that actually rabbits are a good meal, pheasants are a good meal, anything you want to be flying after. And at these early stages, no rush. We just let them investigate and take their time learning that actually when they see a, a pheasant fly or a rabbit move, it means a good meal. And again, getting them used to all sharing, me being there, getting my hands in there and making sure that the hawks accept me on a kill um, as if they don't, they will defend it. And it can cause a lot of problems later on in training. So at this point, don't rush them by dropping their weights too quickly or anything like that. You just want to make sure that they're learning, sharing well, accepting your hands in there, no squabbling, no grabbing, and this is what you want to aim for before you really start dropping the weight and getting them on fast moving rabbits. At this point, build confidence on the rabbit. As soon as the birds see a rabbit move, they think, or a pheasant, they think, ah, oh, easy food, lots of food, and it will help them develop into nice confident hunting birds later on when we start bringing them into hunting condition. You're right guys, it's the start of week three with the young Harris Hawk training. Um, we've got three that we're all trying to train up as a cast at the minute. Um, the two boys, John and Wick, uh, this is their third week of training. Just got them flying free the other day, um, a day and a half ago. And it's uh, their second time on the Bullex pulling a rabbit. So basically it's quite windy today, so I just want to give them a bit of confidence building, building session. So just gonna gut this whole rabbit, get it ready, uh, put it on the learn machine, and then we're just gonna do a nice little bit of easy flying for them. They can have a bit of food up on the rabbit, um, and then we'll do a bit of trade-off training as well. So hopefully what we're gonna do is over the next few days, we're just gonna build up their confidence, get them used to hitting the rabbit, feeding off the rabbit, uh, introducing all three birds together. Um, we've got a female as well, um, and they're all sharing food together as well now. Um, and then hopefully they'll all end up flying really well on the rabbits together. So I'm just removing the guts here, just so they can get a nice, nice bit of uh, easy meat or for confidence at this stage just going to check over the rabbit as well guys just to make sure uh, there's nothing in there that shouldn't be in there you know so now as soon as they hit this it's a real rabbit so i mean you can use fake rabbit lures as well but i, I like to find when, when i'm doing three of them it's just easier because then they're, then they're not just squabbling over one tiny little bit of food on a on like a fake lure or something. This way, it's the real thing. They get the meat straight away, and there's plenty of meat to share. Because at this stage, we don't want them squabbling or anything like that. So we're going to get this set up, put it on the lure machine, get the boys boys and girls weighed, telemetry on, then we'll give them a run out. Cheers, guys. Right then guys, what we're going to do is we're just going to set this rabbit up here, um, just in the long grass. It is very, very windy today. We've been really struggling with the wind up in Lincolnshire for the last uh, couple of weeks, which isn't the best. But like I say, this isn't really about making them fly a real, real long distance. It's more about just seeing them hit the rabbit, see the rabbit, hit the rabbit. I'm learning they can get food off it. Like I say, this is the first time they've done it really, so I've tried to pick a nice, well, the most sheltered spot I can. Um, and then we'll give it a pull. 
And so <coughs> rabbits out there, it's probably only 20 meters or so. Um, I'm just gonna stand over in that corner and just let them see it. Hopefully. This is my bull Exler machine. Great bit of kit, it's been with me for years and years. As you can tell, it's not looking its best these days. Um, but this is what I use to train up all my hunting birds um, to get an initial bit of fitness and um, getting them chasing and watching rabbits run really, really quick as well. Uh, remote control on this, so you can pretty much set it up by yourself. So we'll see how this training session goes. Probably get blown off, but we'll see. Uh, we're just about to weigh John Wick and run them out on their hunting training on the rabbit, on the learn machine out there. Just gonna talk you through um, some of the processes that we use when we're using our telemetry and we're getting the birds ready. We've got a couple of different systems here. We've got the Marshall GPS and the Marshall um, UHF receiver as well. All of them great bits of kit. Um, we're gonna be using the Marshall GPS today with both of them, just because they're young birds. Um, and if they do get blown off or anything like that, it, you know, I can see it on, on my Google Maps and it's just a little bit easier for me to find them. Um, if they do, if, so, if the worst does happen. Um, always use telemetry guys. Um, if you can't afford telemetry, don't buy a bird, um, basically. There's some great bits of kits out there, even, even just like the older standard um, uh, transmitters that you track down on the receivers. Still work brilliant. I hunted uh, female goshawk for four seasons with that. Never let me down, never lost it. So we're just waiting for the GPS now to ping up. We'll get that on the birds. I attach mine via tail mounts. Um, there are many different ways, like this one's a leg mounted one. Um, they, will all, they will all work just as well, apart from my female Harris Hawk eats the aerials um, off them if they're on a leg, so just be aware of that as well. So yeah, that's our little GPS setup and our old setup. Um, GPS, if the GPS does ever fail, you can always use your old uh, receiver to track them down as well. So. For down here at the centre one, we'll find the eagles and the falcons. Uh, we've moved over to the GPS now just because it's a little bit easier. Um, but every system's great. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go get the boys, we'll get them weighed, and then we'll, uh, we'll get this mounted on and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here they are, here are the boys. Um, that's John, that's Wick. Um, yeah, we're just gonna get them, get them all sorted out. Hello, come on in, buddy. Come on, come on. When, move, when moving your birds, always tie them off with the fault and not, just in case you trip up. I do that a lot.
first time they've done it. Uh, still need a bit of confidence work on it. Which is why we do training sessions like this. So I'm just going to leave them, leave them to it now. Just so they get a nice big, big reward. And they can have good crop up like this now. With the high risk socks, putting a lot of time to make sure they're nice and nice and well mannered with the hands. Um, very important to get any sort of graphic to be Sure it'll happen at some point. So now in this early stage of the training, I'm not too I'm not too worried about how much they eat or anything like that. They can have a good Good fill up on it. Is it coming to the glove okay? So it's more just about them being, being nice with each other, except to be in there. You know, they're not grab me or attack me. Anything like that. And then we'll see how the trade off goes. So when we're doing the trade-off, um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and get them both off at the same time. Don't know how well it's going to go. I've just secured them here with clip leashes to my glove. Good boy. Good boy. Eh? So this is uh, the first time doing it together, and as their confidence and fitness improves over the next few weeks. This one's John um, in, in this relationship. Seems to be the more dominant one out of the two. If someone's going to get stuck in first, it's going to be John. And then Wick, his little brother, follows. Right. He's going to keep looking at him, going in there, touching all the food, giving him a hand. Now the peacock's coming in to help. Great stuff. So I find when I'm doing my Harris Hawks, at this stage of the training, I just leave them on it. If they want to stay on it for a little bit, you know, I want them to think as soon as they see a rabbit shaped object going across the ground, then it means they can catch it confidently. And it also means that they're getting a good reward, they're not feeling robbed. Good boy, Wick, eh? Okay? You're a good lad. So, again, try and touch your feet as much as I can. You can get them used to that. Um, it's never nice to be a Now, oop. Okay. Um, but this is the first time I've got them off the ground. So, I've got a hoodie here an old hoodie um, to try and cover it up because I think that might be a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to put my glove back on, hold two chicks um, and then see if I can get them off. Okay. Let's see if one of them comes in. There we go. Normally if John, normally if John does it, Wick will follow. We'll get, we'll get John up first. Okay. There we go, there's one. So now what I'm going to hopefully do is cover that. Come round so Wick can see. Get that one up there. Get him interested, give him a second. A couple of points here. Um, when you first start doing lure training with the Harris Hawks, um, John tended to bind quite quite hard to the uh, lure. Um, this is why it's 
trouble. I'm having trouble here getting him off because his one talon um, was still quite locked up. Um, they need a few minutes just to relax. So I'm looking back on the footage that to avoid this problem happening. I could have left him on there for a little bit longer. And as you can see here, I'm pushing him back a little bit, trying to get his feet off. Um, and that is putting a bit of pressure on his tail. Um, so if problems like this are happening, just take a bit more time and don't try and rush him off it. And also get a tail guard as well if you're concerned. It's not ever really been a big problem, me snapping birds' tail feathers, um, but it is something to be aware of. And then just wait and relax them into it. But this is the first time I'm doing it, so they were overexcited as well. And I think probably I was too. So just a few points there just to watch out for and work on over the next coming days. You can see here as he was trying to step up onto the glove, his uh, foot was still in a closed position. He hadn't actually realised that it was still closed. Um, and then as soon as he got up on the glove, he relaxed his foot again. Like I say, it's not a problem. It happens to them all. Um, but just be aware of it. I think John's probably a bit full now. I'll take that away. Hold this so they both share. He says. So I've always, even from when they were very, very young, always tried to get my hands involved. Open up your feet. They're all very excited today. It's lovely. And now they've got nice big fat crops. Now have a little bit more food. And I think when they're both not looking, I'm going to take that away. So now I'm going to try and get his equipment back round. Already tied off. Hey, good boys. Not bad for your first go. Hey, we can work on that, can't we? And we've got nice full crops here. And that's what we want. So hopefully that training session has built up a load of good confidence for him and then we'll see how he progresses. So this is a few days later and now what we do when we trade the birds off, we actually cover up the rabbit um, using whatever you want to, tea towel, your bag, anything like that and we actually get the birds off um, and then trade them up separately. So I'm just removing one of the birds off now with a bit of food so he can have that on the floor. Then I'm going to get my glove back on and get ready to trade them both up to the glove once they finish their rations. Of course, this is just the very early stages of training. I think this was about the fifth time fourth or fifth time they've ever traded off so as they get older and more mature and they've had a good hunting season underneath their belt they should come off a lot lot easier um, as well but I find this method a good way of getting both of them off in the early stages without them getting too aggressive and it covers the rabbit up and they tend to just relax and forget it's there really So as soon as Wix finishes food, he's looking, he's not, he doesn't know the rabbit's there anymore. He's looking to come back to his brother and to me anyway. So now I'm just going to get him back up onto the glove with no food, just how I've always done.
What are we doing, Joel? Well, it's 6 a.m. I'm just going to take the uh, two male Harris Hawks, a female Harris Hawk out, and the, uh, my sister's male Goss Hawk on their first hunt with the ferrets. So, fingers crossed, it's getting everything ready now, just sorting out all the gear, getting all packed up, and hopefully, we'll have a good day's hunting as soon as the light comes out. Oh, well. Hello. Need to get more colour on little miss. On that hole. Oh, Amy, do you want it to stick it? How about that? Come here. Oof. Beautiful landing. He's got it. 
Good lad, good lad. And here, by the end of week five, all three birds are fit, hunting and catching wild rabbits all by themselves. And as you can see here, the the weeks of trade-off training are starting to pay off as they all just come off individually now and they all accept each other upon the kill. So I hope you all enjoyed this video guys, this is the way I train Harris Hawks and have done for many many years um, and yeah thanks for watching.